communication satellite, we bring you the special report that follows. The leaders of two nations meet across the miles. First, we present to you Mr. Shepard, the president of Armaco. And now, the prime minister of the Salarian Union, Mr. Brudoff. These two great leaders are many miles apart, but by the miracle of superstar, they symbolically shake hands. This handshake has great meaning indeed. It is a promise of peace forever between these two great nations. One week from today, these men will meet in the Great World Peace Palace to discuss all the differences between their nations and settle them. It is believed that these discussions will bring these two nations closer together than ever before. I am Napoleon Bonaparte. Hear me, people of the world. I warn you against peace talks. They are lies. Both Armaco and the Salarian Union prepare for war while they talk peace. Armaco is building thousands of these bombers, and the Salarian Union is increasing its ground forces at the same time. I tell you that in our time, believe me, there will not be any peace because these men lie to you. Soon the world will be in battle again. Napoleon says there will be war. And if Napoleon says it, you can depend on it. Now, that peace conference is ridiculous. It cannot succeed. Remember, Napoleon told you so. Just remember, there will be war. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen, this television station does not know where that voice came from or who he is. We wish to reassure you, however, that the peace conference will go on as scheduled. Over each entrance of the peace palace is the word peace written in another language. This is the oriental entrance. I am Chief Fumble Thumbs of the Metropolitan International Crime Prevention Bureau. I will be in charge of protecting your two leaders. Let us discuss the details. We can protect President Shepard without any help from anyone, let me assure you. We, the picked soldier bodyguards of Armaco, know how to do our job. And we can protect our Prime Minister well enough. You can depend on that, my dear friend. Well, I'm glad you're both so confident, of course. But you've got to remember there's a crazy man who calls himself Napoleon loose somewhere. And we have to watch out for him. With me and my men around, our president has nothing to worry about. My men are pretty darn tough, too. Who said they weren't? Who asked you anyway? Now remember, that Napoleon fellow is around. Napoleon? You watch out for him. We've got plenty of others to watch out for around here. And just what do you mean? Gentlemen, we must all work in harmony, you know. I'll have 300 guards on duty for this conference. Then we'll have 400. Dummies! Four hundred of them. No one in my whole army is as dumb as you are. No one, do you hear? 
Watch your language. You're a gorilla. Listen, our problem is Napoleon. I don't care about that. You worry about him. Oh, that Napoleon. <laughs> Having problems, Chief Fumble Thumbs? They can't even discuss peace without fighting. Oh, it's the owner of the hotel, Mr. Robertson. They're so busy competing with each other, they lose sight of the job they have to do. They'll cause you trouble. You can say that again. That's for sure. Remember, I am very interested in maintaining an atmosphere of harmony here. After all, this hotel is called the Peace Palace, and we work to maintain our reputation. Call on me for whatever you need. A nice guy. Well, it seems I've got a pretty complicated job on my hands this time. I'd better get in touch with Eighth Man. Hello, is Mr. Tobor there? This is Chief Fumble Thumbs. Yes, I have an assignment for him. I... Hey! Oh, Eighth Man! I didn't even talk to you. I knew you'd have a big problem protecting those men, and I came to offer my help. That's fine. And I'll be watching for that Napoleon fellow, too. Then I guess we're all set, Eighth Man. The jet plane carrying President Shepard of Armaco has landed, ladies and gentlemen, and there he is now. Thousands of well-wishers are at the airport, and I hope you can hear my voice on your radio over the noise of the crowd. His beautiful daughter, Julie, has accompanied the president on this trip. Miss Shepard frequently accompanies her illustrious father as his secretary. Her reputation as a great beauty is certainly well-founded, I can tell you. She's dignified, self-possessed, and a charming young lady, a fine asset to the coming peace conference. Your roving reporter will follow the president and his party as they go to the peace palace. The president travels slowly through the streets as the crowds cheer. He and his party are on their way to the peace palace, where Prime Minister Brudoff of the Salarian Union has already arrived. The parade passes the statue of two statesmen, erected by Mr. Robertson in honor of the peace conference. This is your roving radio reporter signing off with the wish that this conference will be a great success. Well, Father, the big conference begins tomorrow. Finally. Yes, Julie, and as my secretary, you'll be quite busy. You'd be wise to retire. Yes, Father, and don't you stay up too late either. Good night, dear. Permit me to accompany you, Miss Shepherd. I will be quite all right, I assure you. I know, but I'm just doing my job. Oh, I see. Thank you, Miss. Well, good night, Miss Shepherd. Pleasant dreams to you. Good night. Miss Shepard, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, miss. I thought I heard a noise. <coughs> well, uh, just to get our discussion started, what do you think of that man who calls himself Napoleon? Never mind what I think. First, you tell me what you think about the statements he made. Well, actually, we think he's pretty ridiculous. That it's all a lot of nonsense, that's about all. Well, we can't dismiss it as nonsense, since he showed pictures of all those tanks you're building in the Solarian Union, sir. While you proposed a peace conference, too. And what about those bombers of yours? What about them? And you proposed the peace conference. We didn't. Why, you certainly did propose it. How can you deny it now? We did not. Yes, you did. Listen, Shepard, you just hold on there. Watch it, you hear? President Shepard, to you, sir, we'll just ask public opinion throughout the world to judge us both. <laughs> Fine men you are to be holding a peace conference. You're acting like children. All right, go ahead. I warned you that this would end up in war, and you can bet that it will. <laughs> Show yourself, I dare you. You're a coward, Napoleon. 
you haven't got the courage to come on out here where we can see you. Napoleon is here. Guards, guards. Guards, where are you? Get that maniac. Where is he? Find Napoleon. I can't see him. He must be here. You'd better find him. Well, do something, will you? Yes, sir. Someone call Chief Fumblefums. I tell you, you're responsible, Fumblefums. Well, where is your protection? Well, uh... All right, what are you men standing around for? Go get Napoleon. Find him. Tobor, listen here. This is no time to just stand around and think. I think you'd be very surprised at my thoughts, Chief Fumblethumbs. Napoleon, do you know where he is? Not just yet, Chief. Not just yet. But I can assure you my thinking is no waste of time. I hope not. It was ridiculous to open this conference at all. Let's go, Julie. I hope you're not upset, Julie, but you're acting very strangely. What's worrying you? I'll tell you about it later, okay, Chief? There was no sign of anyone suspicious, Chief. Absolutely no one. That voice is on tape. That's the answer. There's a tape recorder around here somewhere. No, it isn't a tape recorder. What do you mean? Come with me and I'll tell you, Chief. Well, tell me, Tobor. Who do you think Julie Shepard is? She's President Shepard's daughter, of course. What in the world are you talking about? Well... No! I can't believe that. I just can't, I tell you. But it's true. If President Shepard ever heard what you just said, why, he'd be absolutely furious. Chief, I can show you that what I said is absolutely true. Well, do it then. <laughs> I'll just turn on my memory projector. That is Julie Shepard, right? Yes, of course. So what about her? She looks fine. Now watch, under X-ray. What? That's a, that's a robot! That's right. She's not the real Julie Shepard. She's not even human. A robot has replaced her. Well, what'll we do? Well, Chief... Obviously, the real Julie is a prisoner somewhere. And Napoleon's voice came from the robot. That's it exactly. Believe me now. Yes, sir. Let's go get that robot girl. What's wrong, Julie? You haven't said a word all day. Are you all right? There are guards outside the door. They'll protect us from anything. We're safe here, dear. Who is it? What do you want? Excuse me, sir. Chief Fumblethumbs would like to speak with you for a moment, if you will. Send him in. Well, Chief, speak. Excuse me for bothering you, Mr. President. There is something very important I must tell you. All right. You can go ahead. We know where Napoleon's voice came from. Where? Tell me. Well? Right over there, sir. Are you mad? That's my daughter, Julie, you darn fool. You just think so, sir, but she is not your daughter at all. You've gone berserk. I know for sure she's a robot. She is. Now you go get that robot, Tobar. Right, Chief. You fools. I won't let you lay a hand on my daughter. Guards, get these men. They're mad. Hold it. I can prove she's a robot. You be quiet. Oh! Don't worry, Julie. I'll protect you from these two madmen. They won't touch you. Julie, where are you going? Julie, wait. Julie, come back here. The robot is getting away. Let me go, you hear? There goes the robot. I'm depending on you. Give up, Robot. I'm bound to catch you. She's on the roof. Robot, don't move or you'll fall. Hello, Chief Man. This is Napoleon. Napoleon, you're operating that robot by remote control, aren't you? That's right. And I warn you, don't attempt to get near that robot. I'm going to capture that robot and find out your identity. Don't dare come any closer. The robot is a walking bomb. 
and look down there. Look down there, eighth man. That pool isn't filled with water. It's filled with nitroglycerin, a liquid explosive. If a robot explodes in that pool, this peace palace and everyone in it will be blown sky high. Can you risk that, eight man? What an awful situation. Well, eight man, admit it. You're licked. I can't let that robot get away. You don't scare me. All right, then you asked for it, eight man. Here goes. Oh, no. You mean to say the girl I thought was Julie was not really my daughter, but only a robot? Then where's Julie? All the men are searching just as hard as they can. We will find her soon, sir. Soon is not good enough. You don't know what you're doing. Get Chief Bumblethumb. Do you hear me? Please, sir. You must find Miss Shepard Forrest. Our president is getting ill. We beg of you, sir. Find the girl. I assure you that while it may take some time to find Napoleon, we will soon have the girl. I'm depending on you to find her, eighth man. This is Miss Shepard's room. I'll check it very carefully. The only place the exchange could have been made, kidnapping Julie and replacing her with a robot, is in this room. It's the only time she was ever alone. I can do this job better as eighth man. There. Now to turn on my eye beams. Hmm. No apparent clues anywhere. Wait a minute. That looks like a trap door of some sort. That could be it. I'll find out where this leads. A secret room. Let's have a look. Well, it's built entirely of steel. It's time for my eye beams again. Let's have a look around. Hmm, a very effective prison. Now, over there. Aha, a steel door. Let's just see what's behind that door. My x-ray will do it. There. It's Julie. She's in there. Now I'll just burn my way through that door with a dose of nuclear fire. Well, there she is, but... What? She's sealed in a glass case, and what is that pipe for? Well, Eighth Man, you finally got here. I've been waiting for you. Welcome to Napoleon's headquarters. What have you done to Miss Shepard? What I had to do in order to protect myself, Eighth Man. You can't touch me or Julie will suffer. What do you mean, Julie will suffer? If you take a step toward me, I press a button on my desk that will fill the glass container with gas, and that would be the end of Miss Shepard. You see, you cannot touch me. I won't permit you to escape, Napoleon. You are a threat to peace. I said I was ready for you. Take this, eighth man. While you're busy dodging bullets and the smoke hides me, I'm gonna take care of Julie with the gas. <laughs> Confused, Napoleon? Here she is. I guess you didn't know I can move faster than the eye can see. Now I'll take care of you. Darn you, eighth man. Surrender now, while you have a chance. <laughs> Surrender? Napoleon never surrenders. I'm not defeated yet, eighth man. You can be sure of that. All right. You're asking for it. Now. <laughs> Oh, Napoleon is only a robot. I know who you are, Napoleon. I'm Napoleon. That's who I am. You are really Mr. Robertson, the owner of this hotel. 
And you're working for intercrime to cause wars. Now that you know so much, I'll have to take drastic action. I must blow up the hotel. What? At this moment, missiles are being fired at the hotel. No. Being fired from the statue. I have to stop them. I just have to stop them. Oh, Julie, I'm so glad you're back. Father, Father. Chief Bumblethumbs, I don't know how to thank you for what you've done. Can you tell me the whole story now about that Napoleon fellow? Yes, I'd like to hear it too. Well, Robertson was really an employee of Intercrime, the organization that wants to spread crime all over the world. Now, if the world is at peace, it becomes much harder for them to operate successfully. Therefore... Robertson created this Napoleon character for the simple purpose of wrecking the peace conference. We almost broke up the conference just as Napoleon wanted. Do you realize that? That's right. Mr. Shepard, will you be good enough to forgive me for the nasty things I said in the heat of very foolish anger? Forgive you? I am the one who should apologize. Why don't we start this peace conference over again the proper way, as friends? A fine idea. Chief Fumble Thumbs, I congratulate you on a fine job. Even though you weren't able to catch Napoleon, you did save the peace conference. <laughs> well, uh, I seem to have taken all the credit for saving this conference. Sorry, Tobor. It doesn't really matter who gets credit as long as the job is done, Chief Fumble Thumbs. You deserve much of the praise anyway. Tell me, Eighth Man, how did you know that Robertson was Napoleon? Easy. My computer brain compared voice frequencies which can't be disguised. You haven't heard the last of Napoleon or Intercrime. We'll be back. An Eighth Man will be waiting for you.